Pleasure to welcome Matt Barry to our show, Sports Center anchor and co-host of the Maddie and the Caddy podcast. As uh, we welcome you back to Big Board Sports on 104.5, the team ESPN Radio, and welcome Matt Barry to our show here in Albany, New York. Good morning, Matt, Roger, and Chris. How are you today? Gentlemen, how you doing today? Hey, Matt. We're good, Matt. Uh, can we start with Herm Edwards? Please. <laughs> Love it. Now you're an Arizona State grad, and now you got Herm Edwards as the head coach there. Uh, what, what? That was a bizarre ending in the loss of San Diego State, wasn't it, over the weekend? Yeah, you know, it, we, we pointed to it just kind of looking at some of the teams that were coming off a big win the week prior going into this week, and Arizona State was was one of those teams I need as a potential letdown after the win against Michigan State, and then sandwiched in between, then you got a trip to Washington. It was a bizarre ending in that, you know, you could debate whether Darby caught the ball. They, they look at it looking for the targeting penalty. They're reviewing the targeting penalty to see if that was, in fact, the penalty. Then they see the ball move, and because of that, just a bizarre ending. Not a great loss coming off a big win, but ultimately it goes back to Arizona State just looking different on the field this year relative to how they have in years past. And it was not It was a non-conference game. You don't want to go out there and lose that. But, but ultimately the Herm Edwards hire – I think through the first three weeks in college football, we've seen it in the national media that people are starting to understand that, okay, this thing might work. Maybe we were wrong in jumping to a judgment of this was the worst hire of all time. I never thought it was the worst hire <laughs> no, of all time. No. I always thought it was a, a home run ball, but I guess other people have different viewpoints on that. Where do you stand on, on Herm Edwards? You had a long sit down with him uh, before yeah. the season started. And they, and they really, this is a big game. I mean, he wins this week, goes to Washington and wins. People will really be maybe jumping on the Herman uh, Edwards bandwagon here. Yeah, I was all in on it from the get-go just because I had a relationship with Herm from ESPN uh, for the past six football seasons. And, in fact, when the hire was made and I saw the attention it was getting, I told you know some of our PR people, they get me on any radio show you can in Arizona to, to explain to my home state why this hire is good. And in college football, there's a couple of things that you need to have happen. First and foremost is you need to recruit. Who, what parent or grandparent is not going to let Herm Edwards into their living room and be wowed by him by the time that he leaves? That's number one. You brought in a guy who had a celebrity from his ESPN days that was going to get the program attention, and he could sell anything to anyone. That's number one. Number two in college, you got to have these kids believe in something other than going to school, playing college football, what they're going to do next in their life. And he does that as well. He makes them feel good about who they are and what they are. Sometimes coaches take it a little too far with how they handle their players. Herm's a guy that's going to discipline you, but he's also going to discipline you in the right kind of way and build you up rather than break you down. And I think it was such an out-of-the-box hire, but when it, when it happened, I said, you know what, this is going to work because Herm's great with people. And above all else, NFL is different. College, you have to be good with people, administrators, parents, and players. I think long, long term, it's going to work well. Matt Barry with us here, Big Board Sports on 104.5, the team ESPN Radio. Check him out on Twitter, at Matt Barry, B-A-R-R-I-E. And that's where you also find info for Maddie and the Caddy, the podcast. And, Matt, we'll get to some golf here in a second. But the games this weekend in college football, uh, in addition to Arizona State, Washington, Nebraska-Michigan has has some intrigue to it because of the slow start that, that Scott Frost has gotten with the Cornhuskers and obviously the what feels like a perennial hot seat for Jim Harbaugh. Uh, how do you see that game playing out in the Big Ten? I think it's all Michigan. I think Michigan's going to have their way with them. Um, it, you know, it goes into when you look at new coaches taking over new programs. Here's how I look at it. I look at it in two two columns. One, where was there just a bad football team that didn't have much talent? And two, where was there a team that had leftover talent that didn't perform up to their capabilities? Nebraska was the former. It was Mike Riley just couldn't recruit. Mike Riley didn't have much going on for him there, and Scott Frost is inheriting a team that didn't have much talent. Conversely, if you look at a job like Texas A&M or Florida that Kevin Sumlin and uh, Dan Mullen inherited, 
you know, you look at what Jimbo's getting with the Kevin Sumlin recruited talent, and then what Dan Mullins get with the Jim McElwain talent. There's talent there. They can coach that up right away. Scott Frost has more time. And Michigan coming into the season, they had 9 of 11 guys returning on defense and 8 of 11 returning on offense and inherited Shea Patterson. They're just a good football team that didn't win in week one. I think that this is going to be that moment now this weekend where Harbaugh and Michigan absolutely destroy Nebraska and people are going to be like, oh, maybe we should get Michigan back into the conversation. Mm. Let me let me make a big U-turn here real quick. Uh-oh. Yeah. I just looked at my sheet. I uh, what do you, and this is a little bit, it's it's not off the beaten path, but it's still college football. What are you making of the Tom Rinaldi interview with Urban Meyer? Why is Urban Meyer doing the interview? It seems like he he kind of in some ways is digging himself a bigger hole that if he just moves on, he's been punished, we're done with this story, go coach your football team. And yet we see a lot of Tom Rinaldi and Urban Meyer on ESPN right now. I'm glad you asked the question because it, it is a two-part answer. One, I, I think anyone who wants to get into this industry or just appreciates journalism, I thought Tom Rinaldi went on an absolute interviewing clinic. It was an absolute clinic of how he asked those questions. Now, people are saying, well, maybe he didn't get much out of the answer. It doesn't matter because the interview was good enough to where he made Urban Myers think and give answers that people didn't deem good enough. That's number one. Credit Tom Rinaldi for, for an absolute perfect interview. Number two, I'm with you in that I don't know why Urban Meyer continuously thinks that he needs to be making statements on this. Because each time he does it, it brings it back up, shuffles, bubbles back up the news cycle. And rather than going back to his job this week full time and concentrating on the football, yeah. he's continuously <clears throat> making it about himself and now putting attention on his team who had nothing to do with it. These players had nothing to do with it. And so rather than focus on the football part of it, deal with your personal stuff later, it just keeps bubbling back up. And it's just a bad look for Urban Meyer, even more so than it has been the last month. Yeah, and a hundred percent on Rinaldi. He has done oh, a phenomenal job. Best but but here's my he has. <clears throat> but I'm to the point I don't care. I know I, I I I don't care what Urban Meyer says. I just want him to go coach the team. I don't really I don't care about rehashing everything that's happened. It it's not important anymore. You've done it. We've heard it. Move on. Let's go. Lose when you go to Penn State because I'm going to be in the stands <laughs> in two weeks at Beaver Stadium with 110,000 fans in that game. And here's you know here's where I, sorry to interrupt, but I, here's where I'm with you on that because. Now, I don't know, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know how many people with Ryan Day as interim were rooting against Ohio State. Yeah, Does that yeah. Make sense? right. Now, Urban comes back, and the whole world's going to be rooting against them, and I don't know if that's fair to the players. Yeah, 100%. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Matt Barry with us here, Sports Center anchor, Maddie and the Caddy Podcast. Uh, Matt, one last thing on college football, and I and we do want to ask yeah. you a couple things on golf here. Uh, but A and M and Alabama on Saturday, I would like to uh, move forth with a, a motion that Alabama gets an automatic buy into the college football playoff. Don't give them the national championship, but just put them in the playoff because I'm tired of watching them in the regular season. Maybe play, yeah, the, maybe play the Iron Bowl, but that's it. It's over. I mean, I we I was having a, doing some some prep for the weekend, and I was just kind of looking at, at who they play, and then the rest of the SEC West. And here's where I'm at with Alabama. I believe that Auburn and LSU played last weekend are both really really damn good football teams. Like they're really good. I don't think either of them can keep it within double digits with Alabama. Mm-hmm. I don't. And Alabama's never, Alabama's who was winning national championships with Jake Coker. <laughs> So, this, I mean, it, it, it's actually embarrassing how good they are this year because of Tua. And I'm with you. Minus an injury, and even if Tua does get hurt, oh, by the way, you got Jalen Hurts, who's won 26 career games as starting quarterback at Alabama. This thing is just embarrassing. Yeah, slot him in to the playoff. And then, I, I said it this weekend on Sunday on Sports Center. I said, to me, looking at college football as a whole, Alabama's your SEC champ. Clemson's your ACC champ, and Ohio State is your Big Ten champ. I mean, where where are we now? That fourth spot is really the only one up for grabs, in my opinion. 
Well, I hope you're wrong on on the Ohio <laughs> State prediction. Roger's a Penn I heard State Penn guy. State <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'll be in the house for Penn State, Ohio State in a couple of weeks. Uh, but yeah, we we love college football. It's great to talk some college football with you, Matt Barry. What's your thoughts on the uh, Tour Championship uh, this coming weekend? United States trying to win its first Ryder Cup on European soil since 1993, and of course the Tour Championship this weekend on East Lake Golf Course in Atlanta. Yeah, you know, it, 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 there's a couple of things you get to look at. One, uh, what a remarkable FedEx Cup run it's been for Bryson DeChambeau, and I think he's really shown himself to be one of those those next up-and-coming great American golfers. I think it's a story that Jordan Spieth is not there. Uh, he kind of sputtered down the stretch. But now all eyes are going to point to Tiger Woods again with what he needs to have happen. He needs to win it and have, like, Justin Rose and Justin Thomas and DJ and some of these other guys kind of not perform well to win the FedEx Cup. But I think that's beyond the point. I, I want to see how Tiger, after a week or so off, how his body comes back from playing three or four consecutive weeks. Because there's a thought that maybe his back was going to get tired in those three or four consecutive weeks. I said it was the opposite. I said playing three, four weeks in a row is going to get his body in good shape. It's going to be the time off that gives it time to be sore and stiffened. So I think you watch Tiger this week, see how he performs, because all of these guys, the $10 million paycheck is nice. And there's a host of these top players in the world that can win it this week. But for me, it's going to be how they play going into traveling to Paris for the Ryder Cup. Matt, I want to have one over there in, I think, 25 years. Right. Yeah, exactly. So I, that was going to be my question about the Ryder Cup. I work weekends at the local NBC affiliate. Should I be taking Sunday, September 30th off in order to witness a U.S. win on European soil? You, if you look at the world rankings and who we have relative to who they have, I don't know that I've ever been more confident going into a road Ryder Cup where our guys just have swagger. I know Phil Mickelson's not playing great, but you tell me, you bring Phil and Tiger over there feeling good about themselves, and Justin Thomas has a really good arrogance about him, and Tony Finau hits the ball as far, if not further, than anybody on tour Dustin Johnson, when he's got his A game, I think he's the best player on the planet. I just feel good about where American golf is. And I know once you get over there, it's a completely different scenario, and those guys are going to be feeling good about themselves, and Rory and, and Justin Rose and their playing. It's like, it just, I just wish, and I've said this for years now, I just wish it didn't coincide with football. Because ultimately, as a viewer, I hate being stressed out as a viewer, and I think the time change will help us. I don't want to have to choose between football and the Ryder Cup. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you all the way. But you're right, the time change will help, for sure. Hey, Matt, yeah. one, one more I'll let you go. Just yeah. a prediction. Uh, you, you think Arizona State will win at number 10 Washington this weekend? Do it, man. Do no, it. No, I don't, I don't think they will. <laughs> okay. But, and I've, and I've said this to a couple of people, it's not – it's not the win or lose for me because of where this program was and where it's headed. It's how they compete. And if they get this into the fourth quarter, to me, that says that it's going the right direction. It's too many freshmen playing right now. Make this a four-quarter game, and then you'll have me buying into the fact that this program's going to be different. Well, I'm I'm one of those rooting for Herman Edwards. That is for sure. I just I like his personality for sure, and uh, wish him the best of luck and off to a pretty good start. Matt Barry, we appreciate a few minutes. Uh, Sports Center anchor, co-host of the Maddie and the Caddy podcast. We'll do this again. All right, guys, take care. Have a Thanks, good one, Matt. thank you, Matt. Appreciate it, Matt Barry. Good job there.